then. Oh, we went to the South Range together. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. So, yeah, all right. we used to play baseball together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where yeah. I left off is um, one of the things that I think about what's unique about Latonia is the where we're at geographically and some of the assets that we have that other communities don't have. Um, we have the potential to be able to attract people from outside to come here to visit our community through mm -hmm. the bike trail. Um, we invested, we're investing 300, some 360,000 this year, if I'm not mistaken, into a trailhead project, open up a park, open up the bike trail. Um, we have that bike trail on that end of town, this end of town, we're trying to connect it through the middle of town. It's 250,000 people a year that use that bike trail. That's oh. potentially 250,000 customers that we could draw in their families. Um, and we're going to capitalize on it as, as a way to do it. Now, if you go up to like Cuyahoga Falls, Peninsula, and stuff like that, you'll see the uh, Ohio Byway system, the old Ohio Erie Canal. That's what they capitalize. They turn that into a bike trail and they draw tons of people in. So I'm going to try to do that at the same time as we're trying to address the downtown. Changing it, um, the old downtown used to be, you, know, you used to go downtown, you had drugstore, you had hard store, you know, the old, old, old downtowns where you just you can go get anything you want. Right. You can't compete against big stores anymore like that, but you can create unique atmospheres where people want to come, you know, small like a niche community. Yeah, and yeah. like a niche market community, arts or, you know, antiques or, antiques or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and and make it to a, a de Latonia destination point because we're in the middle of nowhere, but we're kind of right in the middle of everything. Yeah, Indiana. we have a lot of things to capitalize on. I mean, the trains go right through. That's good for transportation. Kids love the trains. I, yeah. I know there's watchtowers. I have a friend who owns one. Mm -hmm. He says kids always ask him to go up in that watchtower just to watch trains. He does photography and everything. Also, the bike trails and Coke ovens. I mean, mm -hmm. there's his, a lot of his, things you can capitalize on. Historically, we got a ton of old homes um, mm -hmm. per capita per house. We have, I, I couldn't give you figures exact, but I mean, you know, Salem's got old Lincoln Street there. It's got all those old mm -hmm. homes. We got a ton of old Victorian homes this house. Historical home. homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, that's, there's people that come down here just to go see those homes. You know, we have the bed and breakfast, but we have a couple other homes, um, throughout town. Actually, your home is a yeah, it's an old one. pretty nice one. Um, but it's, people do come just to see that stuff. So we're going to try to capitalize and advertise Latonia as a destination point for people um, to help bring people and money in to help grow internally, um, using external resources to grow internally. That's the general plan and the layout of what we're looking to do. Um, now you did mention uh, rental properties and real estate. We have 29%, I don't remember if you knack uh, The 65% rental properties, I think it was over the 50% mark for rental properties or no it's it either 45 percent or 65 percent i know yeah it's, it's pretty high is what it is so well, it's been increasing it has been increasing it's um the community has you know it's been you know kind of stagnant uh, for many years while the other communities were kind of addressing some things but we're getting back and like i said we're, we're addressing these things uh one of the programs we did um is we start working with land banks. So these abandoned homes that were foreclosed on, they've been sitting empty for 10, 15 years, some of them up to that long. We partner with the land bank, investors come in and say there's a house and it's kind of dilapidated, it needs restored, repaired. Um, investor will come in and say, okay, this house fixed up will be worth $85,000. I say it will take $45,000 to fix it up. So. As the community, we agree upon that the value of the house would be 85,000. The land bank agrees upon that the value would be 85,000. And the investor agrees that it'll be $85,000 said and done. So the investor says it'll take me 45,000. So the difference is 40,000. Now to attract that investor, if they're looking to rent the home or purchase the home and flip it, fix it up and flip it, we have a different scale. So out of that 40,000, say you're gonna flip the home and you want to fix it up and flip it, that 40000 we require you to put 30% of that 40000 down. So that's what, uh, $12,000. Right. So it costs you $12,000. Now you put your $45,000 to fix it up, that margin there when you go flip the home is your, is your profit. And the goal of that is, is to take these old homes and get them restored and fixed up. Because we're not going to build new homes. These communities are right now we're not going to 
build new homes because it's going to cost you one hundred seventy thousand, two hundred thousand dollars to build a home, which is going to be worth one hundred twenty thousand. So we're creating incentives to do that. Now that's if you're flipping a home. If you're going to buy the home and rent it, I think the margin is twenty percent. You have to put twenty percent down. You put you purchase the house for twenty percent once you complete the uh, the remodeling, the updates. Mm -hmm. Then the land bank, the village, we go through, we check it off and say, it's good to go. We just did it on a property up there. We have two more that we're looking at right now uh, to to actually work with and, and do that same project. And there's three or four more coming on the market. But it's been successful. Um, the first successful one in the county was in Latonia. Um, and like I said, we're trying to find investors actually to do that. Because like I said, every time we fix a home up, even if it's a rental or if it's a flip, it's a it's somebody coming to the community mm -hmm. that's going to be investing, putting tax dollars in, being part of the community. It's an improvement to the infrastructure. Yeah. So as well. it, it's a benefit for the 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 investor because, like I said, you could buy the house for twenty percent of you know. Actually, if it's if we're, if we require twenty percent, you could be getting it for ten percent of what the cost would be. You know, so there is that margin. That's one of the things that we are we're doing instead of just uh, Youngstown went through the tear everything down phase years right. a couple years ago awesome. yeah and they, i mean they they had more issues than we did but at the same time we realized that we don't want to downsize our community we want to grow our community and this mm -hmm. is the way to make it attractive is there any um sort of like uh like what's the industry here and then what are like the new industries coming in like i know there's a cracker plant going in uh shipping like near columbia so uh, a cracker. Um, I think that's over by Hanoverton area, which is Columbiana. If okay. they, it, it, I've been hearing rumors, but that's that's hard to say. Right here, um, we have Penex, which they just expanded uh, a couple years ago. It's a aluminum extrusion plant. They have one of the largest presses presses in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, H and K Industries. They got. I forget what exactly they do. I think they're a, a uh, some sort of machine shop down down there. Yeah, um, we just put in um, in the World Trade Park. We have um, sand printers. That thing was made out of sand. What they do is um, oh the dragon. Yeah, um, wow. it's the only one in the nation right now. Um, it is a three D sand printer, and what they do is they print that uh, they print that, make the mold out of it for steel castings. And then uh, that's how they do it. Instead of making the old wooden molds and stuff like that, the wow. 3, 3D printer does it. Right now, like I said, it's, it's the only one in the nation. We are, they are partnered with Youngstown State University, so they do classrooms on 3D printing. So we're going to try to aggressively grow that because it's, you know, 3D printing has so much potential. We don't even really know the full potential of it, but we're trying to market that at the same time. Listen, we have a. Uh, we have an open workforce. We have training here. So if you have a 3D printing business, because we have 80 acres of vacant land for the industrial park. It'd be good to build in here. You could, you'd be good because we have workforce, a trained workforce, you know, and you have the ability to tap into that where you don't have to go searching for that. So that that's kind of with the partnering with the, with the university. They have a classroom there um, and it's great um, what they're doing there. So we're looking to expand that. Mm -hmm. Um, That's pretty cool. Same time here, and I've been talking a lot here, so I'll let you guys talk. <laughs> um, we are we are changing kind of the the approach in the community, um, in the government itself, as to where we're focusing resources. I mean, we, we are a very limited budget. I mean, my my yearly budget is just under three million dollars, of which the general budget, general revenue, is about seven hundred thousand. So I have very limited money that I could apply to um, redevelopment. So we do attract grants. We do go after those things to help help substitute that. It just is, it's just very slow. At the same time, these little things um, getting the community involvement, which we've been pretty successful uh, as of recently mm -hmm. compared to other communities. We've like I said, I have a good core group of individuals that are out there oh, yeah. just working um, doing that. Um, Ben is working on the, I can't remember, the CD. CDBG. I always, I always get these ones Delta wrong. Delta Revitalization yeah. Grant. So we still have that sitting there and we're kind of waiting to like do a couple small projects so the community mm -hmm. could see these little things so they could buy into the bigger project that's gonna be three, 400,000. Um, I did finally 
uh, in the first time in the history of Latonia. <laughs> we got authorization to spend for engineering, planning, and development of the downtown. Um, I got authorized $18,000 uh, for engineering to just do a, a master plan, which that's you know what those things would cost with the engineering. But that is, we're going to start doing that here, build that master plan, then we can start to segment each section and start addressing those growth action uh, growth things there. But the all the, the big picture is really to get outsiders to come in to spend money, make it a tourist not like a tourist town, but a destination town where you could spend a day um, and just relax and enjoy enjoy your time. And then work on industry too, manufacturing. That's where the the st real stability is going to come. But drawing people outside money in is is essential too. So mm -hmm. that's what we, I have. We definitely have potential to grow that manufacturing at the industrial mm -hmm. park, and that's usually tariff free. I mean, uh, or tax tax abatement. You usually get tax abatements for going into there from the school. And. Uh, and Mitsubishi industry, we have we have other just old uh, factory buildings that people have repurposed already. I know Envelope, Envelope, or, uh, one, Envelope yeah. one is repurposed an old uh, uh, potato chip factory mm -hmm. and uh, their <laughs> production, but, yeah. uh, production and storage. But. Most of our industrial buildings are now being filled up. I think we have very um, we have a little bit of space in the uh, Cherry Valley. Center for Industrial Manufacturing, mm. um, but industrial-wise, we are we are pretty much filled up. Um, so that's why we have the trade park uh, expanding, where we have uh, 80, 80 acres of available land out there for new construction. Um, and I actually just spoke with the Port Authority um, about three days ago, and we talked. We we're just laying out a plan on how to start advertising that to to the outside. Hey, you can come here. You know, we have water, fire, we have all these aspects that most industries are looking for, mm -hmm. um, and it's available, you know, you know mm -hmm. drop your foundation and start rolling. Yeah, good transportation right by 11, you got mm -hmm. the access to the rail lines. Mm -hmm. We do just, have, they have a spur out here now, right off 11 there, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, if you're going to rail products, uh, you could do that, you could, you could utilize that. Um, not that barging is that effective or that utilize that much but it's one of the cheapest ways to transport you can move down to east you could uh get to east liverpool on the ohio river within 20 20 some minutes if you're going to barge for freight moving in or out so yeah and i think they just got a uh i don't know if it's east liverpool or steubenville they have like a I guess a container moving. We have an intermobile system. Yeah, inter yeah. intermobile system. Yeah, we, that's in what Wellsville, they built the intermobile system. So you have, with, right in Latonia, within a 20, you know, with a 20 minute, you could have access to every single mode of transportation minus air. Um, we do have the Columbiana County Airport, but that's not a, a, I mean, it's a commercial airport. But no major commercial airlines at that time, so you would have to go to Vienna mm -hmm. or Akron area for that. Um, but rail, road, and water we have access to. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a, hu uh, a younger population um, in the most of the communities. We have a younger population, which is actually good because you have uh, a lot of potential workforce development mm -hmm. where your population isn't over. 50, 60, retiring, you know, all that stuff. We're, our average population is probably about five or six years younger. Well, that's actually 10. 10 it's years ours younger. Ours is at 35 median age, and Columbia's is about, I think, 43 or 45, mm -hmm. and I think the overall Columbia County is around there. Overall, so, I got actually got a, yeah. I got, I'll get you a statistics book. So, and that, that's, a, that's actually a very good thing, especially prop, uh, yeah. rental properties, <laughs> or properties, new families. That's a good statistic to have. Um, because you have that younger families, younger people trying to work their way up. You know, mm -hmm. most people don't buy a home when they're 20 years old um, in, in right. that aspect. Um, there's a lot of fight fighting on uh, rental properties. Um, there's a negative aspect to it and there's a positive aspect and it depends on which side of the line you stand on. Um, it, it depends on the landlords a lot of times. We do have some agreements, landlord agreements and stuff like that in this community to help protect property values, to help protect um, 
the community as all and actually help protect the landlord. Some people don't look at it that way, but it's a, it's a mutual agreement that helps all three aspects, all three entities uh, uh, benefit from it. Um, so there, there is a little bit of, little bit of bite back about the number of rental properties we have here. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing yet when you start getting really high and then you do start having some other issues, the lower income levels. But at the same time, if you have a younger workforce, it's sometimes a good sign because they're working. Plus, my generation typically doesn't buy houses that much. Um, I, I do notice uh, nationally, um, they don't buy houses as quickly as, uh, you know, somebody in your 40, 40. 40. You know, his, his generation, I have to separate myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he, well, he's, he's, only, he's only, only nine years older than me. Um, his, his, his generation, or that age group, kind of buys houses a lot at a higher rate than us um, mm -hmm. on, on a national level. So it is a kind of generational thing, and if you don't accept as things change, you're in trouble. You mean buying their personal house or rental properties? Or? Buying personal houses. Okay. Yeah, a lot of a lot of our generation actually rents. Um, yeah, statistically, it's, statistically, it's, yeah. it's showing more. Um, I, I won't say they're going to rent forever. They're moving moving into houses just delayed. It yeah, seems. that's that should be the because people's uh, jobs are more um, nationally now instead of thinking yeah. locally. So yeah. they, they kind of move around. People want to be a little more fluid more, right? for. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Establish their career base. I think that, for a little while longer. That is right. true. Um, like I said, there's a multiple factors that you have to. Yeah, I mean, that. lower so, marriage. I mean, not too many people are getting married as well. Yeah. So that's lower, lower possibility of buying a house. But so there's, there's just not lots of different things. There's a lot of factors like into it. I just I don't necessarily rule them out as bad. I don't rule them out as good. I just you know you have to weigh each one with their where they're going. Mm -hmm. um, but all in all, the community is on the right track, um, and we're moving in the right direction. It just, you know, we just got the wheels rolling not too long ago. So, um, but I think we're in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be bringing in a um, new economic director here shortly, um, probably within the next two or three weeks if I'm lucky. Um, finding the right person is sometimes difficult. Um, yeah. But that will help. We'll have somebody that specifically works. And helps focus on on that aspect. You know, was there someone at the position before? Is that a new position? Um, I, I actually was the first person in that position. Yeah. And okay. kind of, I don't know, built it from scratch. But we had someone from about uh, a month or two ago, but she ended up coming down with a serious illness, and she had to step down. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> she was a very knowledgeable individual. Oh it yeah. Just, it just. It was gonna need could, I hated losing her, but I mean, it just kind of sometimes these things happen. So, yeah. um, but that's you know that's just, just a quick rundown of where we're at. Um, we get together sometimes and just discuss these things um, to where we're sitting on all the little little projects. Um, and when I get somebody in here in that position, they'll be able to kind of reel all the projects in and keep keep better track of them again. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So, you got any questions or? Um, well, like. Uh, like I was saying before, Columbia has really grown with the little strip mall they got going, other developments, but, um, you know, housing is kind of at a shortage. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah. somebody that wants to kind of enjoy Columbia and it's downtown, you know, they could kind of maybe come out here and build or, mm -hmm. you know, buy a house. So I think would that kind of help you economically? This year, so that would be a great, great benefit. Um, I don't think it won't be too really fast, um, but it's going to happen. Um, at the same time, we said we have a lot of loss that new construction could happen. Uh, that's going to take a little while to get to that point before people want to start going to the old downtown, the old south side of the town, and rebuilding houses where houses were demolished or destroyed or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It does have the potential um, habitat for humanity. Um, does buy some of the empty lots, and they do rebuild houses. There's pushback. There's there's all sorts of things. Every time you do something, there's always because they're kind of limited. Yeah, yeah. but um, they do do that. I think in the last year, Habitat for Humanity. Not last year, last couple years. I think that's the only houses that were built on the south side were Habitat for Humanity houses. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, some people don't like them. I don't. I don't. I don't know why, but they are building 
houses. Um, the north side of the town has higher property values, as you know, it's, it's newer. Um, the, the libraries up there, school. And yeah. Nice Victorian houses and. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is a nice, uh, compared to Youngstown, where you have a lot of rental properties, you know, there's crime, you, you can buy rentals on one street and then the next street's terrible. Yeah. yeah. So like here, you know, I, I see crime at a minimum and, you know, it's a nice place the, to raise a family over there. We, we do, yeah, our crime level has been, violent crimes is, I mean... Every now and then, it, it's yeah. going to make the front page yeah. paper for four, no, I think four, the, four months. I think the last <laughs> violent violent crime, someone was uh, breaking into a house and he fended him off with a samurai sword. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was going to say somebody get somebody with a pitchfork or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really we we are very fortunate. Violent crime. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of old families in this area, so they kind of still hold themselves together. We don't, you know. At the same time, the I call them transient population, the rental population. They're moving in and out. Um, we don't have violent crime. We have petty, petty crime. Every community has that. A mm -hmm. um, lot of lot of our stuff is really juvenile crime, um, which is you know kids. Kids are bored, right? Yeah, that's that's what a lot of. <laughs> I would chalk up that probably about fifty percent, sixty percent of our issues are are that. Um, but our police force has been a lot more active in the last last year um, in, in addressing some of these things and it has made a difference. Mm -hmm. um, which crime, low crime, and good zoning makes good property values. Yeah. Um, and that's that's also key because if, if we could increase the property values, it draws more influential people, you know, people with higher property value or higher incomes. That money flows back to the school, which increases the value of the school. It just—it's a cir uh, circular thing. So um, that's we, what we're looking at. And I we have just revamped the zoning and yeah. and uh, police got a new police chief, so they're they're real real on yeah. it now. And it's that's doing good. real yeah. good. The zoning, we, like I said, we just redid that. We are in the planning commission to revise. I mean, we we went through the book. It took us almost a year. To work through that book, retype it, you know, make sure the codes and everything was up to state with the PAR, make sure that it would fit the village. Um, there's a lot of things that weren't fit in the, fit in the village, or, were, you know, we were, some people were doing some really damaging things to the community, but you couldn't really address it because we didn't have codes on it and stuff like that. So we've, we've went through and redid that. It's in the planning commission's uh, phase right now where they review it, approve it, then it goes to public reading. Uh, hearings and then goes to council so we're still six months out to getting that zoning completed so um, but we're we're moving in that direction so and i'd say i'm the outsider at this point i mean i've been paying attention for a couple of years since i moved here from indianapolis and in the when i first got here things were stagnant and in the in the past number of months and I'm paying a little more attention lately too. So the momentum is there and the momentum is is building and I and I, I like the, the things that I've seen from when I first got here through that span of time and the momentum's good and it's in and, and it's time to to kind of rebirth and take that momentum and to move forward here. And and I think a lot of people are buying into that locally. From the community, mm -hmm. um, yeah, people are coming out of the woodwork that I haven't seen for four years being around. So it, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like Salem's expanding and Columbia, and you know, why not? Why not? What's on your end? <laughs> like you said, yeah. I mean, just geographically, you're you're between Canfield, Lisbon, Columbia, and Salem. So, like like you brought up, which was a great point. A lot of those benefits, people can live here and use those. But then again, those people that live in those areas can come here to uh, mm -hmm. to do things we're trying to do here. Yeah, I think Northern Columbiana, and I'm going to up as Columbiana, Latonia, Salem, in the next 20 years is going to be significantly different mm -hmm. from what we see today. Um, there's a lot of people from Honing County, you know, Boardman, um, they're trying to 
push south a little bit, you know, the properties increase, property values are increasing here. Um, and I think that you're going to see, it's almost, I bet you in about 20, 25 years, it's going to be mm -hmm. completely different um, from what we see today, you know. Um, yeah, I was talking to a prominent person in uh, Columbia and I said it would be like unrecognizable in mm -hmm. about 20 years. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and like I said, we have to now capitalize on that because exactly. it's, the, everywhere else is growing. And the thing is, because they're growing, we could easily ride off of them growing and start our own development too. Mm -hmm. um, because we're so close in proximity, you know, that's, that's the, you know, if we were 50 miles from Columbiana, if we were down, you know, in Jefferson County or Carrollton County, where the communities are so far apart, it wouldn't work that way. But we are four minutes from Columbiana, six minutes from Salem, people travel back and forth and we can capitalize on each other growing. Um, and I think that's, that's where we're going to be at. So. Awesome. All right, that's, that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> Trailway project, for example. We've been working on that grant for five years, and we're going to break ground. After five years of working on that grant, for a $300,000 project, the government project is not really that big. It's a parking lot, a pavilion, an access road, and some 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 paving to the bike trail. Where is that going exactly? Uh, off of High Street, um, right by Quaker State. Mm -hmm. uh, not Quaker State, uh, Quaker City. Yeah. Except um, I don't have a map here. Clean everything up. I tore it all down. Um, yeah, really, actually, yeah, these old mills are gone. Those are torn down during World War II. They scrapped them um, for the war effort. But we basically, we acquired all this land here, and the bike trail runs the old rail line right here. And it stops uh, right about here. And it picks up right right over here. So we have this section where the trail doesn't go right now. Now this is still main rail line here, so we're trying to bring the, rick, the bike trail along the main street and connect it back to that section there. Um, to mm -hmm. divert those that traffic through our commerce or downtown for commerce activity. So yeah, I guess like these old towns like Salem and Lisbon, Latonia, it's just, it takes a lot more money to to yeah. revitalize older historic buildings and yeah. building a new downtown, obviously. Mm -hmm. There are some ways you can go about getting a lot of the costs like taken away by the federal government, fe federal and state government. Yeah, like how did Youngstown, the downtown, do, do it? Um, I know they're, they're getting it through. Uh, they have a lot of different grants that they've, they've gone for. I, I know they've done some historical preservation uh, grant tax credits. So that's mm -hmm. where... If your building's classified as historical, you can get 45% of your costs to re to revitalize it, taken care of, just as long as it keeps in line with the historical integrity of the building. And uh, I know they've gone for that a lot. Uh, I know the city of Youngstown themselves is putting a lot of money towards it as well, but just grants such as historical tax credits and CDBG downtown revitalization the, grant, the you can. One thing that the state just opened up, and that's what I'm, I'm, once I get this master plan put up, it's called an RDR uh, district. Uh, they just, the state general assembly just authorized that. And with that. RDR? What was that? Uh, um, read, uh, redevelopment? No. Uh, Downtown revitalization development. I, I would have to pull it. Okay. I can't remember. Um, exactly. There's so many acronyms, but I can't remember all the things. Like Young Sound's actually going program. for that as well. Yeah, they're going yeah, for they're, it. They're, they're, and you, you create a district, and you could have up to 10 acres of land in a district. And you could have multiple districts. Now, we would only have probably one district. You have to have one historic building in there that's mm -hmm. on a national register, which we do. We have the, um, the Schmidt House, which is on a national register. So we capture that draw, and put that in the district, in the downtown district, and then it allows us to capture when we redevelop and we do something that increases the property value. So like say we put we create that district and then we put these bat the flower baskets and say the property values because of this increase by one percent. So then your property taxes instead of going one hundred percent to the school, seventy percent comes to us that has to be used in that district, but we get to recycle that money back into us. Because the thing is communities 
have a disadvantage when it comes to property value. You're always trying to do it, always trying to increase it, but we really don't uh, benefit from it. Um, I, I think the village of Latonia brings in like $56,000 $56, from millage off of property values. It's not a lot of money. Um, the school brings has a budget of $31 million because of property taxes, because that's where the school gets funded. We don't have any real funding from um, property taxes. But this district, when you do this district, it now allows 70% of the increased value to re be reallocated to the community to grow. 30% still goes to the school, but it still it allows, they're starting to realize that the municipality has 100% at stake has to cover 100% of the development where the school benefits usually 95% of the time, 90% 95% of it. So we could spend a hundred thousand dollars for redevelopment of a certain section of a community and we'll see a return of, you know, $19 a year off of it where the school will see, you know, thousands of dollars. So they're starting to realize that there's a huge disadvantage in in requiring the communities to ma maintain everything and the schools benefit from it. The school has, like I said, our, our community has a budget of just under three million. The school has a budget of $35 million. But we have to maintain all the roads that go to them. We have to maintain the water lines, the sewer lines, you know, everything that they benefit from, we have to maintain. It's not like we need to be friends with the school board. <laughs> yeah, well, they, we, we actually, <laughs> <laughs> Latonia School and Latonia uh, government actually have been very beneficial mm -hmm. to each other, um, and it, that that partnership has actually grown uh, significantly um, because we are a one school municipality where you know larger cities have you know multiple schools. Um, all these communities here are one school municipality. You know, Columbia has Columbia School, Salem and Salem School, but we have benefited from working with each other at a better uh, right. with each other uh, mm -hmm. more. But there is, they're starting to realize that as they work with us, the, the long-term benefit benefits them because they're going to get that money because those those have time limits, those RDRs. I think like, it's like 20 years, 10 to 20 years. 10, 10 years without school board approval, 30 years with school board approval. So after 30 years, 100% goes back to the schools. But in that time, you got all that money to help develop yourself. Why, why is that? Because the number one thing in a community is educating the people? Is that why? Um, so just how, just just how the state things. sets up funding for school. Mm -hmm. That's how the, you know, that's just mm -hmm. how the state levies for to fund the schools was through property tax. So it all comes from the governor? Um, comes from the General Assembly. Okay. So they make that decision. But I mean, Ohio's been funding schools that way for many, many years. Yeah. Um, and it just... They're starting, and there's actually been ruled, if I'm not mistaken, that it's been ruled uh, unconstitutional at the state, if I'm not mistaken. Because it's state funding federal. I yeah, think. it's it's really it's really weird, yeah. but at the same time, there's no they don't really have a solution for it. So, but they're trying to do these little things to help the communities because when the recession mm -hmm. kicked off in nine, 90, uh, 2008, we hurt the most, you know, the state government got through, they cut, cut us all out of everything and we had nothing, you know, we were, yeah. you know, we barely kept the lights on. Yeah. So yeah, like us at South range, we have the, we have the, uh, this middle school and mm -hmm. this old high school that are like empty. Now mm -hmm. we have this massive new school that we like can't pay for. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and it's just like a mess. And they, and they just keep putting money, more money in the football stadium like, yeah. at some point. And like, I'm <laughs> like, what is going on here? Yeah. This is like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Schools do help a community. I can't, I can't oh, yeah. roll that out. You know, good school, attracts families you know mm -hmm. south range attracts families um Latonia's got nice school yeah it's, it's got a nice school good, like i said it's and it's and system. they're doing a lot to improve at the uh the administration mm -hmm. there. but at the same time like you have a big school like uh you know a real nice school like south range mm -hmm. and a lot of these people are moving out here to avoid the taxes yeah and to yeah. be in a, like a nice farm community but then they like do open enrollment mm -hmm. and then yeah. you're getting people from youngstown that everybody came to south range to avoid so it makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, there's there's, just, there's a lot of dynamics that are changing, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's where we're at. But I'll, Ben, what do you have to say? Yeah. We, um. I don't know. I think you kind of touched on a lot of things. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I think our big driving forces right now is the 
downtown revitalization plans for it, getting the new economic development uh, coordinator coming in. Uh, where the nonprofit just kind of funnel more funds in for mm -hmm. people to write off the taxes for even small yeah. projects like that. We could even they yeah. that six for five dollars thing they could count that as a write off even. Yeah, as well. that that's once we do. That's, that's why we did kick the nonprofit. Now we're st struggling with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just us, you know. It's it really it, this this whole thing started with me and Ben. Really, I think I think that's you know. Yeah, it's, it's I was okay. on council and I, I asked council for somebody to help with economic development. We hired him and then I ran for mayor and it's it started from there and, and mm -hmm. everything's starting off of, you know, the mo the, the momentum is, you know, is he, uh, he was saying too, it, it, that's what we're, and that's what I was trying to capture is that <laughs> momentum and keep it rolling. Um, but the nonprofit that we have set up um, is, is to help with that, is to help with these projects, to make it easier on these individual groups they could utilize this um, to help do their little projects help mm -hmm. little community improvement projects and this could you know if it, it wants if it gets the I don't know why I'm pointing this but the uh, the nonprofit <laughs> once it gets you know up and running has a, a board of directors you know they could help steer projects outside of um, outside of having to go to council because everything was done by council. And if council says no, then nothing ever happened. Yeah. And that was a lot of problems. Was it like was, a three fourth vote or something? It was just a no vote oh, on just, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, had asked, I don't know how many times I asked for maintenance on the Coke ovens or just design work for that over the two years I was there. but. Yeah, so I, it was kind of just hard trying to find things to find funding for. I think they're actually Kind of getting a new turn of council and kind of a new yeah. I guess they're they're starting to change, but they're they're still 1980s. They're still thinking that the downtown businesses are going to come back. The uh, yeah, they're not. You know, they're not. Those type of businesses are really, in all honesty, gone. Like the mom and pop. Yeah, the mom and pop in this area. But you doesn't mean you can't capture a new. Uh, niche market and I really think you know with the rails the history mm -hmm. you really can I mean people come down here all the time you'll see them taking pictures people will come to this community but they come here do their thing and they go you know there's nothing keeping them there's there, nothing right? to keep them here you know we have so many people that come here but then they just go because there's nothing you know to spend their time they'll go to Columbiana I have a good friend who right. lives in Latonia went to school with him you know he's, he's a good friend of mine went to Columbiana to put his brewery in there, you know, that's the thing, you know, he's, you know, Latonia is a good spot for, it, but, you know. Oh, the birdfish? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know so, those guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, because. Duns uh, and Snyder's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah, then I know uh, Roland. Yeah. Cousin. So, okay. Yeah, well, Jared <laughs> Channels, you know, went to school with him, you're, for, I graduated with him, but he lives okay. right, right in Latonia up on the road there. Um, yeah, because those guys were from South Range area, so they went yeah. to, went to school with you guys. Then I guess, uh, but that's you know that's the thing we have. You know, like right now, nobody wants to invest in Latonia because they don't feel that it's secure. But we'll create that environment, and it's going to take some time. It's going to take a few years. Like I said, the population. I kn I know we're going to take some some beatings. You know, I know I know the population is going to slide. As the population slides down a little bit, it creates harder problems with the budget. At the same time, medium income is is increasing here. So I'd say we're definitely on the upswing. I mean, it's just yeah. the past 10, 20 years has been pretty pretty hard on Lithonia, but things are turning around. Need some kind of industry, you know, new manufacturing company or something yeah. to come here. You know, and like I said, that's when I talk to Port Authority. That's they're really trying to promote that because they know that this area, putting something out there, is going to benefit not only Lithonia. Going to benefit everything else. I did meant I did mention it. All of Latonia is a free enterprise zone. We did pass that. It's a, the whole entire village is a free enterprise zone. Um, now that doesn't really help, you know, residential aspects, but it helps industrial aspects, you know, and reinvestment, capital improvements, and stuff like that. So it helps them with their tax write-offs. Um, that was probably one of the smart things that they did mm -hmm. uh, for attracting businesses. Some communities just did their industrial parks as a free enterprise zone. And we, since we have industrial land, I, I had a zoning map, you'll see we have some industrial land over here, industrial land over there, 
manufacturing land over there. We just decided to do it all. Um, not that you're going to benefit most areas, but it will it will help out. So, cool. what do you got to say now? I said my piece. <laughs> yeah, my piece, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I, from what you guys are saying, too, we're kind of on that upswing, and we got the momentum going in our direction. But also, we, we I feel like everybody has a longer term vision. They're not mm -hmm. looking for tomorrow. To wake up and downtown is transformed. It's going to be progressive, and you're going to see you're going to see changes, but they're they're going to be slow. But they're going to be there. Five years from now, it's going to be it's going to be different. Ten years from now, it's going to be real different. So, it it's 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 having the community buy in to that long term vision, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And and. Part of part of our our brainstorm here is is for the community to buy into that vision, take some ownership into that piece of the pie, and and run with it. Mm -hmm. And I and I think people want that, and I think people will do that. Yeah, I mean, the, when I first started here, it's it was like pulling teeth trying to get people just to give their opinions or trying to get some information. But now we actually actually Adam Keller, he's a real real influential uh, person in the community, well, active person in the community. Mm -hmm. And he actually called the office and after uh, Kevin was like, was asking if he could help out some, in some mm -hmm. aspect. But uh, you see a lot of people just now coming together and yeah, looking, I, looking to help. When, when I was on council, I think on, on, on an average meeting, as lucky if one person was in the council chambers. <laughs> yeah, and no, no was, exaggeration. And if it oh, was, it was, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was Dave Keeler who now sits <laughs> on council. He came down. Um, now you come to a council meeting, and I would say on an average meeting, you're going to have, I mean, a, a low meeting is just five people. On average, you have 10, 10 people here, which is good for a small community. You go to Columbiana Council or Salem Council, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, I held I held a meeting up in the library where I had 40, 50 people there. Um, I've had sometimes that people residents are very angry about some things, and I have I've had some 30, of those 30, 30 people 40 trying minutes. to squish in that room. Yeah. It, it does yeah. happen, but they're re-engaging mm -hmm. because they actually they're now seeing that what they're saying is being heard may not be acted on the way they want, but what they're seeing is being heard, and they're seeing things happen, so they're re-engaging. Like I said. I got a core of core group of women, about six women that are just out there, just doing projects, cleaning up stuff, you know, and, and it's it's great, you know. That's that's free labor. I mean, right now we only been doing this uh, for about a couple weeks, and they've raised probably about two hundred fifty dollars for that. The project's going to be about three thousand, thirty six hundred dollars. Doesn't seem like that much, but if I were to go to council right now and ask for thirty six hundred dollars for, they would say no. Man. So, but when I raise two, three thousand, and I go to council, hey, will you match this? Because they've done all this work. It's a yes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of getting them to council to do stuff, which they're always uncomfortable <clears throat> doing. And at the same time, we're you know looking to get new people on council to help mm -hmm. help fresh ideas. You know, change change out the the old way of thinking of you know. Push it on the, or don't do anything. Yeah, and hope some, it goes some, away, something, you know? something will go away if you don't something do anything. Will pop up and you know, and, and waiting on for some magical business to come in. And <laughs> yeah. say, or, I've heard it so almost, many times. Almost and, happened. You know, Max, some some big old business is going to come in and uh, save us. It, it's we that may happen. I'm not going to say that we won't have a big business come in here that's going to invest. You know, have a, have a workforce that we're getting half a million dollars from for income taxes. And stuff. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. But I'm not going to sit here and wait for that to happen. I'm going to start making the changes happen now, and then right. if that happens, that's a that's a huge benefit to us. And some of those things, I think, in the works and in the plan, are those type of things that could bring some project like that, a bigger project where they come in and they look around, and see, oh, I like I like what we got going on here. There's some growth showing. There's some people that are actively engaged and involved. Yeah, let's let's do this here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once it starts rolling, it's going to kind of roll real quick. Yeah. <laughs>